Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, in this video, we are going to continue the topic of our last lecture. That is that about orders. Okay. Let me recall that uh, given some set A, we may say that P is, P is a binary relation. We shall see. P is a uh, strict strict order or sometimes i'll call it ordering a strict order on uh, a if and only if of course uh, p is a binary relation on a uh, p is irreflexive that is it lacks any loop it is irreflexive and p is transitive Similarly, uh, Q is a non-strict order, non-strict order on A. If and only if Q is a binary, still a binary relation on A. Q is reflexive for A. Q is transitive and at last Q is anti-symmetric. It is worth noting that uh, being irreflexive and transitive uh, implies being anti-symmetric. So as a matter of fact, and uh, indeed we have proved it, every strict order is also anti-symmetric. Moreover, we discussed uh, an important theorem last time. Assume that uh, we have a function phi that takes a binary relation uh, and uh, amends it with all, all the pairs of uh, identical elements. And on the other hand, assume we have another function psi that subtracts id from, from a given uh, binary relation. So we know that these two functions are indeed by ejections uh, mutually inverse uh, between between the sets of all strict orders uh, on A and uh, all non-strict orders. So uh, phi is uh, a bijection from S of A, where S of A is a set of all strict orders on A. of all strict orders on A and similarly uh, N of A is the set of all non-strict orders on A. So phi is um, a bijection from uh, S of A and Psi is, um, is the inverse bijection. We know that Phi uh, equals the converse of Psi. That's it. So given uh, one, um, given a strict order, you may obtain, you may easily obtain a non-strict ordering. So uh, you know, that means that uh, the pair XY belongs to phi of P if and only if uh, either XY belongs to P itself or X equals Y. So we see that uh, he, here we obtain a less or equal version of P. If, if P means less, then, then phi of P means 
less or equal. And likewise, given Q, a non-strict ordering, something like less or equal, we can obtain um, its uh, strict version the following way. So uh, X is less than Y if and only if X is less or equal than Y, but nevertheless, uh, they are not equal to each other. So practically that means that uh, every order has two uh, closely related uh, to each other versions. The strict one and the non-strict one. So in principle, if we are uh, talking about an order, it uh, doesn't matter whether we define it why it's strict version or it's non-strict version. So every strict order has its uh, non-strict counterpart and vice versa. This uh, motivates the following idea. Uh, let A be a set. We say that this beautiful A, which is a triplet of uh, of A and two relations on it, is a pose set. It is called a pose set, which is a shorthand for partially ordered set. Uh, if and only if this symbol stands for uh, a strict order on A, this symbol, less or equal, stands for a non-strict order on A, and moreover, these two are connected, that is, this less than is indeed psi of less uh, then equivalent, vice versa, uh, less or equal is just phi of less. So a pool set is a set uh, equipped with a pair of orders which are related to each other. Of course, uh, that means that we can uh, obtain essentially the same object uh, if uh, we uh, uh, if we specify just one of those, either the strict version or the non-strict one. So we can identify we can identify this. Uh, triplet with I the pair, just A with its strict ordering or, or the non-strict one. So we can see, uh, we can assume that uh, both these pairs stand for the same object this partially ordered set. By the way, uh, as a matter of terminology, this set is called the ground set. The ground set. Of our pool set. So what is a pool set? A pool set is, uh, is, uh, one of the simplest examples of, of a structure. In mathematics, structure is a set with a few relations or functions on it. Say every graph, every group, every ring, every field, and so on are examples of structures. And here uh, we see pool sets, structures uh, composed of uh, some set with an order on it. 
you may either specify the strict version of that order or the non-strict one. These are still uh, the same the same objects. As an example, you may uh, say uh, consider the set of all subsets of naturals with uh, set inclusion as a non-strict ordering. And this is the same object. This symbol stands for the same object uh, as this one where you mm, take the strict version of the same ordering, you know, A is a, sub, is a proper subset of B. That means that A is a subset of B, but still they are not equal to each other. And the main practical idea here is uh, that uh, we will define all uh, order specific notions for a pool set that is uh, we can uh, freely mention either the strict version or the non-strict version but this uh, will refer to essentially to the same order okay let us define some order specific uh, concepts the first of these uh, is maxima and minima What do I mean? So, let A be a pole set. And let B be a subset of its ground set. Or you uh, may say that it is a subset of a pole set. It is possible to abuse our language this way okay i say that uh, x is uh, called maximal in b or is a maximum it is uh, a maximum or maximal element in uh, b if and only if the following two conditions hold. X is an element of B. And uh, next, there is no greater element in B. Nothing in B uh, may be greater than the next. Nothing is greater than X. Does it mean that uh, why uh, that X is greater than every other element? Not at all. We shall see an example in a uh, few minutes. Of course, as usual, we can uh, get together all these uh, maximal elements to the set max of B. So this is a set of all such elements from B uh, for which no greater element in B exists. Likewise, uh, we can define uh, minimal elements. Similarly, min of B, the set of all uh, the minimal elements in B, consists of all such elements uh, of all such elements x excuse me all such elements x in b for which we have uh, no less element minimal means nothing is less than this element maximal means nothing is greater than this element. These two notions are relative to a subset. They are relative to a subset, but sometimes uh, we want to take A itself, our ground set, as the subset. So max of, um, of the whole 
post set is just this set. So you take A as B. The same for minima, of course. Let us consider an example. First of all, uh, we need an ordering. Let's draw a diagram. So assume that A is, say, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now let, let us depict an ordering. So we have 0 here, 1, uh, 2, three of course these arrows uh, these arrows uh, stand for pairs in our ordering so that means that th this arrow means that uh, zero is less than two so zero is less than two zero is less than three one is less than two one is less than three uh, now let us add more elements, namely five and four. So I locate four here and add the following arrows. First of all, uh, is this diagram uh, a one for? Is this diagram suitable for for a node? Is it transitive? Clearly, it is not. Clearly, uh, this diagram does not depict an, uh, a transitive relation. But nevertheless, we can assume, we can make it transitive uh, via adding more arrows. Say, 0 is less than 2, 2 is less than 4, so it is necessary for transitivity that 0 is less than 4. But of course, uh, this procedure would uh, make our diagram too bulky. We don't uh, want this uh, effect. So let us assume that. So, so, so let us assume that uh, we have added all this uh, transitivity implied arrows without uh, really depicting them. So. Um, all the arrows necessary for transitivity are just implied. We don't want to depict them uh, in real. So what do we have? 0 is less than 2, 0 is less than 3, 1 is less than 2, then 3, of course, then 5. Uh, 1 is less than 4 because uh, 1 is less than 4, and 4 is less than 5. Uh, by the way, please uh, notice that in general, this uh, binary relation, this order uh, has nothing in common with our natural ordering. For example, in our natural ordering, zero is less than one. But here we have no arrow and we have uh, absolutely no reason to add it by transitivity. So we see that here uh, in this ordering, say zero is less than four by transitivity as zero is less than two and two is less than four. But Neither zero, no zero is less than one, neither one is less than zero. So these two ele elements are incomparable. So zero and one are, as they say, incomparable in this ordering. Okay. Uh, but we are interested in maxima and minima. Let us find these elements. First of all, which elements are minimal uh, for the entire pool set? So these are just elements uh, which, uh, which have nothing less than 
less than them. Nothing must be less than these elements. Our alleged minima. So uh, we have just finitely many elements here and we can test every one of them. Five. Is five minimal? No. Four is less than five. So five is not minimal. Is four minimal? No. Two is less than four. Is three minimal? No. Zero is less than three. Zero is less than two as well. So two is uh, not uh, minimal either. But what about zero? Do we have anything less than zero? No, we haven't. So zero is a minimal element. The same uh, applies uh, for one. One is also minimal and these are only minimal elements in this pool set. Mm -hmm. What about maxima? Which maximal elements do we have here? Okay, uh, everything except five has an element greater than that. That means that five is the only maximal element in this entire pool set. But on the other hand, let us consider a subset therein, B. B consists of uh, just two and three. Hmm. Uh, which elements are minimal in B with respect to our ordering, of course? Hmm. What do we have uh, in B which has nothing less than itself in B? Let us take two. Is any element, is any element in B less than two? Of course not. Three is not less than uh, two, they are incomparable. So two is a minimal element and B and likewise three is a minimal element and B. Hmm. But the same holds for maxima. You know, nothing in B is greater than uh, two. Nothing in B is greater than three. So this uh, two incomparable elements uh, comprise both maxima and minima in B. So we see that if uh, something is a minimal element, it doesn't prevent it from being a maximal element in the same subset. Uh, so minimal means nothing is less than me. It doesn't uh, say, say anything on uh, whether I am uh, less th th than something. If, uh, if two or more elements are incomparable with each uh, other, if, if uh, in a set of elements they are mutually incomparable, uh, this set uh, just uh, coincides with uh, its Minima set and its maxima set. Mm -hmm. But still, we have another important concept. That of a least and a greatest element in a set. It is something related, uh, but different. Okay. In the same setting, where uh, A is a pole set, and B is a subset thereof, we may say that X is A. Please notice this ungrammatical but uh, logically consistent construction. X is a least element. X is the least element in B, if and only if two things hold. First of all, X is an element OB, and B is comparable, and more or X is comparable, and moreover, uh, X is less or equal than any element or, uh, in B. So X is uh, 
a list element if it is less or equal than any other element. Please notice that here we are using less or equal, while our poset uh, was specified with just less than version of our ordering. But we know that this doesn't matter. Given less um, then we can easily restore its less or equal counterpart. That's it. Uh, and similarly, we may uh, obtain a definition for a greatest element. X is a greatest element. in B, if and only if X is, of course, an element in B, and next, X is greater or equal than any element in B. Hmm. Let us return to our example. Where do we have uh, greatest elements here. Mm -hmm. Look, five is uh, naturally the greatest element in uh, the whole poset. Five is the greatest. It is unique. It is the greatest in the whole poset. Do we have uh, any least element here? Something which is less or equal than everything? No, we have no such element. Uh, because it is, it is easy to see, and we shall prove it in a minute, uh, that uh, every least element must be minimal in the respective subset. So if uh, anything is, pretends to be a list element in this set, it must be minimal. But minimal elements are just 0 and 1. While neither of those uh, is uh, a list element. 0 is not a list element because 0 is not less than 1. And similarly, 1 is not a list element. So there, there, are, there, is, there is no least element in our poset. Mm -hmm. So uh, let us prove a relation uh, between uh, greatest elements and maxima. And similarly, uh, least elements and minima. So lemma one, as usual, let A be a poset. Uh, let B be its subset. Then X. And let X be an, a, an element of our set. X is a greatest element in B if uh, if 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 not not if and only if if X is the greatest element in B then it is uh, the only maximum in B look if there is a greatest element, it is uh, the unique maximum. As a corollary, that means that uh, the greatest element is unique. If we have two uh, greatest elements, Both singletons of these elements uh, must uh, coincide with maxima of B, with the set of maxima of B. So 
these two singletons must be equal. So as an easy corollary, uh, we uh, may conclude that a greatest element in B, if it exists, of course, it is not guaranteed, uh, is unique. But now let us uh, prove this theory. By the way, what about uh, what about the inverse implication? What if something is is a unique maximum? Is it guaranteed that this element uh, is uh, a greatest one in B? In fact, uh, this is not so. But for finite sets, nevertheless, uh, if, if we know that uh, there is just one maximum in B, this would mean that uh, this element is the greatest one in B. But for infinite orders, this is not generally true. You may uh, construct the respective counterexample uh, at your seminar class. But nevertheless, let us prove our lemma. Hmm. What is given? It is given that uh, X is the greatest element in B. That is according to the definition. That means that X belongs to B. And uh, each, no, no element in B, uh, excuse me, Every element in B is less or equal than X. This is given. What is required? It is required to prove an identity between two sets. And this identity is just a pair of uh, inclusions. So first of all, uh, we need to prove that X is indeed a maximal element. And next, uh, we want to prove that every maximal element is, uh, in fact, equal to X. So for every Z, if Z is a maximal element in B, then Z equals X. Let us prove these two parts. For the first claim, Assume that X is not maximal. Hmm. It is not maximal in B. What does it mean? Being maximal in B uh, means that our element belongs to B and there is uh, nothing greater than this element in B. But we know that our X our X is an element of B. Hence, the only reason for it uh, to not be, an, uh, not be a maximum is that there is something, there is something in B which is even greater. There is a strictly greater element in B. Hmm, okay. But now let us apply our other hypothesis. Everything in B is less or equal uh, than X. So we have that for this Y, we obtain both. Y, X is less than Y. And on the other hand, y is less or equal than x. So what do we have? x is less than y. And y is less or equal. We know that uh, this set, this relation, less or equal, uh, is just phi of less. That is, it is less union identity. So that means that Either we have y being less than x or 
uh, we have y being equal to x. Hmm, okay, let us open the brackets. X is less than y and y is less than x. Or alternatively, x is less than y and y equals x. So for the first case, let us apply transitivity. Applying transitivity, we have that x is less than x. And in this alternative case, we know that identical sets behave identically. So we also uh, have that x is less than x. So in any case, x is less than x. But we know that uh, our strict order is uh, necessarily irreflexive. So it is not possible for x to be less than x. Hence, we have obtained the contradiction. Assuming that x is not a maximum, uh, we uh, have got a contradiction. That means that it is uh, indeed a maximum. Now, let us prove our second claim. So for every maximal element z, uh, we need to uh, obtain that z equals x. Okay, let Z be a maximal element in B. Then, of course, by definition, Z belongs to B uh, and uh, no Y in B is greater than this Z. Nothing is greater than Z. Mm-hmm. But what about X? What about X? Uh, definitely X is an element uh, of B. Let us compare it uh, with uh, Z. Nothing, nothing in B uh, is uh, greater than Z. That means that Z is... not less than our x x is uh, that is not less than our x but on the other hand uh, every element in b not excluding our z is less or equal less or equal than x so we have that uh, Z is less or equal than X. Hmm. Z is less or equal than X, but not equal. So we obtain Z is either less than X or Z equals X, but Z is not uh, less than X. We can easily combine it uh, by uh, ex expanding this uh, expression opening the brackets uh, so here we have uh, obtained a, we have obtained the contradiction and here we see that z equals x and z is not not less than x excuse me here we should have disjunction so either false here or z equals x z equals x as uh, it was required so we see that every greatest element must be uh, must be maximal and indeed a unique maximal element similarly one can prove that uh, every least element is a unique minimal element. Okay. Now let us introduce another concept. Uh, that of uh, upper bound and lower bound. Upper and lower bounds are similar to... Uh, least and greatest elements but we can lift uh, these requirements so these are elements greater or equal than everything in our set but not necessarily 
elements of uh, this set themselves. Okay, as usual. Let A be a pole set. And let B be its element. We say that X is an upper bound. Or uh, let us start with introducing some notation. B upper triangle. This uh, will stand for the set of upper bounds of B. What is it? It is a set of all such elements, please notice, from A, from A, not necessarily from B itself. Uh, which uh, are greater or equal than everything, than everything in B. Similarly, one can define uh, this set B lower triangle, which consists of all such elements in A, which uh, bound our set B from below, that is, uh, X is less or equal than every element in Y. Clearly, if X is an upper bound and uh, belongs to B itself, then we can easily obtain then that this uh, X is just is just uh, a greatest element in B, or you can uh, say that it is the, the greatest element, for we have proved that mm, uh, a greatest element is unique. Then, X is the greatest element in B. And, of course, similarly for uh, lower bounds and least elements. Now, let us come back uh, to our example here. Let me reproduce it one more time. Zero, one. Zero is less than two. One is less than two as well. Both uh, these numbers are less than. Oh, okay. So here we have four, five. The same. Mm -hmm. And let us consider two subsets in this pool set B that uh, consists of two and three, and another one, say uh, C. C consists of 2 and 5. Mm -hmm. Now let us see which elements are upper and lower bounds for these subsets. Which upper bounds does B have? You know, B have uh, no greatest element. But uh, nevertheless, because 2 and 3 are incomparable, nevertheless, there is an element which is greater uh, than both 2 and 3. And the only such element is indeed 5. On the other hand, uh, the set of all lower bounds for B consists of 0 and 1. Look, 0 and 1 are incomparable to each other, but nevertheless, uh, both elements are less or equal than everything in B. Mm -hmm. What do we have for C? Uh, for C, we have just one upper bound, 5. 
Of course, as five belongs to C, it must be its uh, greatest element. And what about low bounds? For low bounds, uh, we have uh, just one in this set, two. Two is less or equal than two and less or equal than five. And more lower bounds we have uh, without our set. These are zero and one. Look, zero is less or equal than two and less or equal than five. In fact, it is uh, strictly less than both elements. Uh, here we have uh, a non-empty intersection between C lower triangle and C itself. The intersection consists of one element. Uh, and this element is uh, the uh, least element in C. By the way, as a easy corollary here, we have that the number of elements in this set and this intersection is uh, not greater than one because every element here is uh, a greatest in B, but greatest element is unique. So we either have no such axis or just one of them. Okay. So far, so good. Uh, and now let us introduce another concept, that of uh, supremum and infimum. Okay. What is called uh, supremum of B? It is just the least upper bound, or better, a least, because it is not, it doesn't necessarily exist. So, a least element in B upper triangle. So, supremum. Uh, is just the least upper bound. And similarly, the infimum of B is the greatest element in B lower triangle. So, supremum and infimum are respectively the least upper bound and the greatest lower bound. Of course, these elements uh, are may, may be non-existent. Okay. Let us consider our exemplary case. So, uh, do we have do we have a supremum for B? Of course. Because uh, the upper bound is unique. So we have the least upper bound being equal to 5. Exactly the same uh, holds for C. Its supremum is 5. Hmm. What about infima? Do we have uh, any greatest upper uh, any greatest lower bound for B? No. Uh, it's uh, two upper bounds are incomparable to each other. Nothing uh, among them is uh, the greatest one. So this infimum just doesn't, doesn't exist. And clearly for C, its infimum is its least element too. That is easy. Mm -hmm. So far, so good. These uh, notions are very popular. Uh, I am sure that you have, you have uh, come across them in your calculus course. But then most likely the definition uh, was uh, slightly different. Most likely you have defined not least upper bound, but uh, minimal upper bound, not greatest lower bound, 
but maximal uh, law bound. And of course, for some kind of orders, namely so-called linear or total orders, these are equivalent. Now, let us move to the concept of, uh, of a linear or which is more popular in the English speaking word total order. But I'll call it linear uh, to prevent any confusion with total binary relations. But uh, before treating this linear orders, let us define uh, one more concept. It is also quite popular and important in mathematics. This is that of lattice. Lattice is a pool set uh, of some special features. So a pool set, a pool set A is called a lattice. It is called a lattice if and only if for every two elements we have both a supremum and infimum uh, for the set comprising these two elements. For uh, every two x and y in A, there exists an element. Of, of course, uh, this is... Uh, now I, I will abuse... Okay, I don't want to abuse. There exists A and there exists B such that A is uh, the infimum, you know. Infimum is the greatest element, so it is unique if it exists. A is the infimum of uh, this set of X and Y, and B is its supremum. Lattices are quite common in mathematics, and now let us consider one as an example. Uh, I'll say that uh, the set of all subsets of whatever set is uh, is a lattice. Let us prove this fact. So assume. Assume that we have uh, two elements of our set that is two subsets of U. Two subsets of U. Let us make a drawing. X and Y. Two subsets. What does it mean that uh, A is its infinite? Uh, it's infinite. A is an infimum of this set if and only if uh, A is its greatest lower bound. That is, A is less or equal than everything in this set. That is, A is less or equal than x, and a is less or equal than y. So it is a low bound. But moreover, it must be the greatest low bound that is for any other set, which is a low bound for any other set, say a prime, if A is a lower bound, yeah, if A uh, belongs to the set of lower bounds, if A prime belongs to the set, then A prime must be less or equal than, than A itself. Or you can restate it the following way. If A prime is less or equal than X and A prime is uh, less or equal than y, then a prime is a subset of a. Ha! What does it mean? That means that a is 
is a common subset. So in a word, A is a common subset. And in fact, A uh, includes every other common subset. So A is the greatest. It is the greatest common subset. It is very similar to the greatest common divisor. But now it is the greatest common subset. What is the greatest common subset? In fact, uh, this greatest common subset is just the intersection of our two sets. Here it is. The intersection is indeed the uh, greatest common subset. Why is it so? Because uh, every other common subset is a subset of uh, the intersection. Okay, let, uh, let us prove. Let us prove it. Uh, it is uh, evident that the intersection of X and Y is a subset of both the sets. And on the other hand, uh, assume that A is a subset of X and A, A prime is a subset of X and it is a subset of Y. Of course, we know that then every element of A prime belongs to both X and Y. So A prime is a subset of, of the intersection of X and Y. So, uh, obviously, the greatest common subset is just intersection. So we see that this infimum always exists and equals the intersection of our two sets, which is another subset, of course. And what about what about the supremum? What is the supremum of uh, X and Y. Look. B equals such a supremum. If and only if. The following two conditions hold. Uh, B is a, co the common superset. So both X and Y are subsets of B. Uh, and. For every B prime, given B is a superset, B prime is a superset, uh, this B prime is greater or equal than B. You know, supremum is the least uh, common superset. The least common superset. So, in principle, uh, we have many other supersets, yeah? Many other, uh, many different common supersets, like this one. But one of these supersets is the least one, which is included in the every superset. What is the uh, least common superset? It is easy to see that this is the union of X and Y. So this supremum in fact, equals the union of X and Y. That's it. And you can easily see that uh, natural numbers uh, augmented with uh, divisibility relation is another lattice, another example. And if we take two naturals, uh, what is the infimum? What does it mean that A is uh, the infimum of this set with respect to our ordering? That means that A is less or equal than X, that is, it divides X. And it is less or equal than Y, it divides Y. And moreover, for uh, 
a divides y for every a prime, which is uh, a common divisor, a lower bound in more abstract terms. We have that a prime divides a, so a is the greatest lower bound or the greatest common divisor. So we see that this uh, infimum is just the greatest common divisor of two natural numbers. And in set theory, excuse me, in uh, number theory, you can uh, easily prove that every two naturals and in fact every two uh, integers have a greatest common divisor. For example, the greatest common divisor for zero and zero is, of course, zero. Every number divides zero. But what is the greatest among, among numbers with respect to this ordering? What is divisible by everything? It is zero. Hence, zero is the greatest common divisor of two zeros. And uh, similarly, this u primum of uh, two naturals with respect to this divisibility ordering is the least common multiple, of course. Okay. Now, let us consider even more uh, restrictive property of uh, orderings, namely this already announced linear or total orders. Every linear order will be a lattice, but not vice versa. A pool set A is called a linear order or sometimes total, but I'll strongly prefer this term, uh, is called a linear order. If every two elements therein are comparable to each other, that is for every two X, for every X and every Y in A, they, uh, they, they, there is no requirement for them to be distinct from each other. Either X is less or equal than Y or y is less or equal than x. Of course, uh, you uh, should be familiar very well with uh, this idea of linear orders because every order you have uh, considered so far in other courses like uh, your high school course, uh, like calculus, uh, most likely was linear. So, you know, natural orderings of uh, naturals, integers, rationals, reals, all these uh, orderings you are familiar with are linear. They are all linear. And in fact, you can uh, depict it as a line where every two elements, every two points are uh, comparable and one to the left, uh, the leftmost one is uh, the least one. You know, it is a line. That's why uh, we have this uh, linearity term, this word. Okay, but what is uh, not linear? Obviously, any ordering where we have a pair of incomparable elements is not linear. For example, this ordering is uh, not linear. The orderings of uh, subsets, say, of, of naturals uh, and naturals with respect to divisibility are 
not linear either. For example, if we uh, take this pool set, then we see that it is not linear. Say this uh, singleton is not included into this one. Neither this one is included into this one. So this is not linear. The same for divisibility. Two doesn't divide three, no three divides two. This is not linear. Okay. It is important uh, that as an exercise, you can prove that every linear uh, order is, is a uh, lattice. It is obvious, in fact. If A is linear, then A is a lattice. If every two elements are comparable, which one can uh, one take as the supreme uh, or the infimum? It is important that maxima and greatest elements and minima and least elements are the same for linear orderings. For this very reason, you have not most likely uh, come across yet uh, this distinction between minimum and least one, uh, maximum and the greatest one. Okay, let us make uh, the following uh, observation. Observe that if uh, our pool set is linear, then for every element therein, if x is not less than y, then y is less or equal than x. And of course, if y is less or equal than uh, x, then clearly x is not less than y. Why is it so? Look, uh, we know that x is either less or equal than y or y is less or equal than x and if this thing is given if this thing is given if x is not less than y then uh, then we see that this is only possible when x equals y you know uh, x is not uh, less than y but x is either less than y or x equals y so we see that x either equals y or y is less or equal than x but uh, in both in both these cases uh, we have that y is less than less or equal than x and of course uh, the inverse implication is even easier because if y is less or equal than x and x is less than y, this uh, contradicts transitivity and irreflexivity. We have already seen this situation. So, uh, for linear orders, not less means greater or equal. Uh, I'm sure that you have applied this argument many, many times. But please observe now that this is generally true only for linear orderings. As a corollary, uh, we may uh, say that in a linear ordering, an element is maximal if and only if it is the greatest one. We, uh, we know that the greatest element is maximal, but now we vice versa have that uh, every 
everything maximal is greatest. If A is linear, then for every x, if x is maximal in a set, then x is greatest element. Why is it so? You know. Here we have that X belongs to B and uh, for every Y in B we have that uh, Y is not greater than X. Y is not greater than X. But clearly this means uh, according to our previous observation that means that for every Y in B Y must be less uh, uh, less or equal than x. So x is indeed the greatest element in B. In particular, as the greatest element is unique, uh, in a linear order, maximal element uh, is necessarily unique. And the same applies for minimal element. Likewise, you can uh, rephrase... Uh, the definition of suprema and infima uh, for, for linear orders and uh, uh, obtain something more familiar to you taking into account your calculus course. For example, uh, X is a supremum in B. That means that X is an upper bound and uh, x is less or equal than every other upper bound. But as our ordering is linear, you can rephrase it. x is an upper bound and uh, nothing, no upper bound is uh, less than x. So this effectively means that x is a minimal upper bound. Not the least one, but minimal. So what do we have? X is an upper bound, and uh, every upper bound is no no upper bound is less than X. So in other words, nothing which is less than X is an upper bound. Nothing which is less than X is an upper bound. So you know, here we effectively we effectively think that the uh, Being an upper bound and being less than uh, X uh, are inconsistent. So this is equivalent to saying that uh, everything less than X is not an upper bound. And finally, we have uh, for this term, for every Y in B, Y is less or equal than X. And uh, for every z less than x, there is something. You know, z is not an upper bound. So there exists y, uh, which is uh, not less, no equal than z. That is, you can... Uh, rephrase it the following way. Z is less than Y. And this is exactly the definition of supremum uh, you have in your calculus course.
X is the supremum for B, and only if X is uh, an upper bound, and uh, for every element less than X, we have an element from B which is uh, greater than this Z, for every Z. So it is something like uh, the leftmost upper bound. So if if we take a step, if we take a step to the left from uh, X, we will immediately obtain an element Y from B, which is greater than uh, Z, which witnesses that Z uh, was not an upper bound. Okay. Another uh, two important uh, concepts are that of chain and anti-chain. Basically, a chain is a linearly ordered subset. So let A be a pool set and let C and D be its whatever subsets. We say that C is a chain in A. It is called a chain in A if and only if every two elements in this set are comparable. Every two elements are comparable. So it is, uh, it is similar to what we have for, uh, for linear order, but uh, here linearity is restricted to C. So every two elements in C are comparable to each other, but this uh, says nothing about elements without this set. Okay. And uh, funny enough, D is called an anti-chain. It is called an anti-chain in A. If and only if no two elements in D are comparable. But look, here we have something interesting. Uh, here we should recourse to the strict version of our order. Why? Uh, because you should uh, encompass the case when X equals Y. If X equals Y, of course, uh, it is uh, necessary that x is less uh, or equal than y and y is less or equal than x. You cannot prevent it. So uh, to encompass this case, uh, you want to uh, forbid just this strict comparison. There are no two elements uh, in our set for which we have one is less than another one. These notions are also quite important, uh, but uh, I'll restrict our treatment thereof to a pair of examples. Uh, okay. Let us consider the pole set of naturals with respect to divisibility. It is not linear, but nevertheless, uh, we have chains therein. In fact, we have infinite chains. First of all, let us make uh, a diagram of this uh, order. One is less than everything, uh, you know. These are uh, th these arrows are for strict version. That is uh, divides but not equal. So I don't want to draw loops. 
One divides, what? Divides two, divides three, divides five, and all the other prime numbers. Two divides four, and uh, besides four itself, two and one, there are no divisors uh, of four. But six is principally different. Six is the least common multiple. Uh, of two and three, so we have uh, two incoming arrows to six, not including the loop and uh, the arrow from one. And so on. here we say have fifteen. Uh, of course, we have infinitely many naturals, but among those, we have the greatest one, zero. Everything divides zero. So one is the least element, zero is the greatest element. We have incomparables, say two and three. Uh, but do we have any uh, chain here? Of course. As a chain, uh, we can consider this set. The set of all uh, powers of two. That is... Zero, zero is not a power of two, one, two, four, eight, six, and, and so on. So it is a chain. Uh, every two elements here are comparable. We have uh, something like a, a linear ordering, and in fact, it is linear. Uh, we can uh, make the following interesting observation. 2 to the power n divides 2 to the power m if and only if n is less than m in the sense of our uh, natural ordering of naturals. But uh, this ordering, this natural ordering, we are uh, familiar with the most. Uh, this ordering is, of course, linear. Look, uh, one ordering on this chain mimics, somehow mimics another ordering, which is linear. So this mimicking ordering is uh, linear itself. And this relation between two orderings, when one somehow copies another one, is called order isomorphism. And we shall... Uh, consider the respective uh, concept in our uh, next lecture. But uh, to finish today's business, let us also provide an example of uh, an infinite anti-chain. By the way, it is very easy to give an example of a finite chain. Uh, say you may take an empty set, a set that consists of one element, or in this case, you may take, say, 2 and 6. 2 divides 6, so it is a chain. And for, for an empty chain, you may uh, also take an empty set as an example or a, uh, an, a, a, a singleton. A singleton is both a chain and an empty chain. But how can one uh, construct an infinite empty chain? So we need an infinite set of uh, naturals where uh, no two numbers are such that they are different and one divides another one. So they must be uh, mutually incomparable among any two uh, neither divides the other one. So we can take this set of all primes. It is uh, the most obvious option here. Let us take all such numbers which are prime. We know that there are infinitely many primes. Of course, it is an empty chain. If we have two primes, Uh, it is not possible that P divides for, for every two primes. For every two primes, uh, it is not possible that 
P divides Q but differs from Q. It is not possible that P divides Q but differs from Q. So this is for our strict version of divisibility. Divides but not equal and Q divides P. So this is not possible that P is less than Q and uh, Q. Uh, okay, it is neither possible that P is less than Q, nor Q is less than P. Neither option is possible. So that's it. One can intuitively see that uh, every ordering is uh, something something like can can, can be uh, somehow partitioned into either chains or anti chains. Uh, both can be uh, taken as some uh, building blocks for our pool set. And in fact, one can uh, greatly develop this observation to uh, so-called deal war theory, which is applicable to uh, finite pool sets, but uh, there are some uh, similar theorems for infinite case, for the infinite case. But this is uh, beyond the scope of our course. Okay. I hope this uh, was uh, quite quite clear. We have introduced many notions uh, concerning orders, chains, anti-chains, linear orders, lattices, uh, supreme and infima, upper and lower bounds, uh, greatest elements and least elements, minima and maxima, and pool set set themselves as uh, this is one of the simplest examples of structures that is uh, sets equipped with some relations on them which was possible for us uh, because an order has two faces. Every order has two phases. It's strict version and not st it's non-strict version, which are closely related to each other. Thank you. That is all for today.